Peter Jasik has spent over 14 months in a prison in Sudan. That's in a part of Africa because of his missionary activity, false charges and all that. When we uh, left off before the break, we're talking about you now. You're going into prison and five times you went into different prisons. Tell me what was it like there? Was it, uh, was it difficult or would that be an understatement? Uh, this was the first time in my life to be in prison and uh, right uh, the first time in Africa in a foreign country. So the conditions in the Sudanese prisons are very bad and I thought the first prison was very bad. Uh, there was uh, filth and uh, humidity everywhere, different, uh, uh, you know, like crawling animals and flies and all over uh, the, the room and there was not enough space. Uh, the prison cell that uh, they put me in the first uh, night was uh, designed for one prisoner and there were already six other prisoners uh, on the floor. It was actually 1.30 a.m. when I was put into this cell. So uh, the conditions always seemed to be very bad, but I had no idea at that time that any other further prison will be even worse conditions as far as the accommodation concerns or the food. Along the way, you're in prison with guys that were um, you know, sympathetic at least to Islamic State. Um, they knew you're a Christian and you suffered beatings. Yeah, you know, when uh, my conditions in prison got worse and worse uh, week by week, day by day, and at first they started to limit my movement in the cell during their prayers or during the time where they were reading Quran. So at first I was supposed to stay behind them. Then they thought I should not even look at them when they are bowing down and praying. So they asked me, or they told me to stand in the corner, in the kind of toilet corner. And later on they were even uh, uh, demanding that I should wa uh, face the, the toilet sink when uh, they were praying. So that I would not interfere with their prayers. So then later on, they started to slander. They called me filthy pig, a filthy rat, and uh, they stopped calling me by my name. And if I do did not respond to, they said, filthy pig, come here. And I didn't react. At first, I didn't want to say, uh, admit that I'm a filthy pig. And then they started to beat me with a wooden stick. So later on, I learned it's better to respond to this new name rather than to be beaten. Oh my God. Now, as a Christian, uh, you travel all over the world. You know what the Bible teaches about persecution. How was that a comfort to you in the middle of being called horrible names and uh, getting beat up? I remember the time when I was on my knees and they were actually interrogating me because they wanted to find out about the Christian work that uh, our organization was doing in Sudan. Uh, when they didn't like the answer I answered, they started to beat me. And I was on my knees uh, and they used the wooden stick I vividly saw the picture of uh, the Lord Jesus when he was uh, ex uh, being beaten uh, by when he was uh, being uh, interrogated. And uh, so I knew that someone already went this way ahead of us uh, who suffered for us for our sins. So when I was going this way, I felt like it's a privilege to go this way, the same way like the Lord Jesus uh, uh, was uh, beaten up with a wooden stick and they were spitting at him and things like that. So for me at that time when I was physically attacked, um, I was uh, experiencing the, the deepest peace in, mind, in my mind. And even though I do not even remember like the pain from uh, those beatings uh, and that moment when I was beaten with the wooden uh, stick. Wow. Eventually you got a Bible. Uh, tell me about that. Uh, I got my Bible f after five months uh, being in prison. Uh, you know, I, when I travel to uh, these restricted countries, I do not travel with a book as a Bible because I have many, maybe 200 different translations of Bible in my cell phone. Yeah and I can at least read some of those languages or translations. So uh, they took my cell phone, so I didn't have a Bible. I asked for the Bible, but they told me we don't have Bibles here, which was not true. Uh, but they said, we only have Korans. And uh, in fact, uh, every cell in the first prison had at least two or three Korans. And uh, people, apart from these uh, five times a day prayers, uh, there were always three, four people reading Koran. And when they read the Koran, they read it out loud and or they sing it. And so 
that was the situation that was very uh, complicated for me. I could not concentrate my mind. I heard all these prayers and the reading of the Quran. And at the same time, I was also very weak and not healthy. I lost um, 55 pounds uh, within two months. And I was also anemic, which was then later on discovered when I was on a hunger strike. I was eight days on a hunger strike. And after four days, they took me to the hospital and did some blood tests on me and forced me to receive the dextrose infusion so that I would have enough glucose in my blood and later on I continued another four days uh, but then I realized my health was not very good and you know I have worked 20 years in the clinical chemistry hematology and blood transfusion uh, specialty in the hospital so I knew when I saw my results I knew immediately that I'm in a serious conditions and later on I decided after eight days to stop my hunger strike and that was also uh, the ex explaining you know why I could not not concentrate my mind because I had low hemoglobin concentration which uh, does not bring enough oxygen to your brain. We're almost out of time but uh what did you learn from this? Has it made you a stronger follower of Jesus as a result? I know you wouldn't have chosen it but you went through it and as you said the Lord allowed you to and you said it counted a privilege but what have you learned from this? Uh, I learned uh, what it means to wait on the Lord. Uh, when, we, when I read the scripture later on, after five months, I received my Bible. I read so many passages, you know, that spoke uh, directly to me what it means to wait on the Lord. You know, for instance, you know, uh, I uh, was never thinking about, you know, how many years uh, had uh, Rebecca and Isaac wait for uh, their two children, um, Jacob and Esau, to be born. It was 20 years, yeah. right? Uh, then I read the New Testament and I read that Apostle Paul for, was two years in, uh, in um, prison in uh, Caesarea. And uh, it is not written there, but when you read it in the context, you find out that he was two years there. So I think the time factor uh, was something that I learned, you know, to wait on the Lord uh, time-wise, you know, just wait, uh, but also to expect help from him. And this is the lesson that uh, I uh, really uh, learned in prison, what it means to learn uh, uh, to uh, wait on the Lord and to expect help from Him and completely put everything into His hands. Well, Peter Jasek, we are so glad that you were released from prison. I know it's an answer to prayer. It's good to see you out. And I know the Lord has got a different phase of ministry. And I know there's a book out. So when you have the book out, we'll have you back. God bless you and thank you again. Thank you. And we'll be back with more of 100 Huntley Street right after this.